it's time for our annual holiday tradition, guys, where we sit down together and plan out our meals for the following year. Actually, I don't know if that makes it a tradition or not. Tell me in the comments below how many years you have to do something before it's a tradition. Because if this is a tradition, that means we have to do it together every year. Otherwise, I will be very sad. Just kidding, I don't care who you plan out your meals with, as long as you plan them, because that will definitely make your life easier. For those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, two years ago, I posted a video about how I plan out my entire year of meals in one night. And I thought that I would post that video and I would get a lot of comments about how crazy I am and weird and how ridiculous it is to do that. But instead, I got a lot of comments from people telling me how much it had helped them and how it inspired them to do the same thing and how it had made their life easier. So because of that, I have kind of made it a little tradition on this channel to meal plan my entire year of meals with you so you can get new ideas for how to make your meal planning better. So if you'd like to follow along with me, grab your meal planning calendar, grab any pens that you would like for filling in your calendar, and grab all of your cookbooks that you need for planning your meals. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about simplifying mom life. So we talk about routines, decluttering, meal planning, and budgeting. So if that sounds like something you would like to see more of, click that subscribe button down below and ring the bell next to it so you can be notified when the next video comes out. Now, before we get into the meal planning tonight, I want to tell you guys about something I am super excited about. This is something that I have wanted to do since I started my blog and my YouTube channel, and I'm just so excited that it has finally happened. I have created for you guys a meal planning workbook. This will help you in every area of your meal planning. It has a page for you to figure out your breakfast rotations like we talk about in our meal planning series, your lunch rotations, snack rotation, if you want to do that. We talk about this in the meal planning series. You don't necessarily have to, but if you want to, there's a nice little page for that here. And if you would like to just have a nice, simple four week dinner rotation, you can also do that. But if you want to plan your meals the way that I do and you would like a more comprehensive dinner plan, I have everything you need to plan out your meals for the entire year and still make them interesting and exciting. Then you actually have a meal planning calendar and I left all of the dates blank so that if you purchase this workbook, you only have to purchase it once, you don't have to purchase it every single year, and you can just print a new one off every year, write in the dates for the current year, and use it over and over again. Then at the end, there is a little weekly menu that you can print off as many as you want of and put that week's menu on your fridge. So I'm actually going to be using this calendar for my meal planning tonight, and I printed it off using two-sided printing so that it's a complete calendar. And then I also, I printed this off at FedEx actually because I don't have a printer at my house, and they spiral bound it for me, and they also put this clear cover on it, and this black backing on it. So it will work completely like a calendar now. And if any of you would like to have this workbook, I will put a link in the description below so you can check that out as well. All right, let's get into the meal planning. If you have seen any of my other meal planning videos, you know that I use theme nights to simplify the meal planning process. And if you haven't seen those videos, I will leave some links in the cards and in the description down below. But for this year, I decided that I didn't really want to come up with theme nights because my brain is just tired right now. I have three kids, one of those being a seven month old, and I'm working on a lot of things behind the scenes for a new course that I am coming out with, hopefully early next year. And I'm just kind of tired and deciding on my theme nights is just one thing that I didn't really want to have to do this year. So to mix things up a little bit, I asked my husband to come up with this year's theme nights. I gave him this handy dandy sheet from the workbook that has a whole bunch of theme night ideas. And he told me that he didn't want to tell me what the theme nights were. Instead, he wanted to give me a super secure piece of paper folded in half that I was supposed to look at on camera and read the theme nights that he had chosen. So I think he actually did more than just the six or seven that I needed so that I could choose from those and kind of narrow down from there. But 
he took this job very seriously and anytime I would walk remotely near him as he was figuring this out, he would turn his paper over and cover it as if I was going to cheat on a test. So I'm very interested to see what he has written for me. He said some of these I may just laugh at and not find that useful. So <laughs> I am very interested to see what these are. Number one, a grill at night, which doesn't surprise me at all. He loves to grill. And the thing I love about that theme night is he usually does the cooking on grill at nights. A family choice night, which is something that I typically have done in years past. A casserole night slash comfort food night also does not surprise me. My husband loves casserole and he comes from the Midwest and I feel like a lot of people that I know from the Midwest love casseroles. And I did not grow up with a lot of casseroles so it's kind of a foreign idea to me to have casseroles as comfort food, but I know he loves them and anytime I say, hey, give me a meal, I need something to write down, he chooses lasagna or some other random casserole. Option number four is an ethnic food night, which I absolutely love, but typically in my experience, ethnic food takes a lot more time to make, like Indian food or Thai food, Mexican food, not as much, but the other two especially, and I think that's more what he's thinking because he loves both of those types of cuisine, they take a little bit more time and I'm definitely trying to simplify this year because I am just very tired from having another little human in our house. So as I'm making my meal plan this year, I'm definitely on the lookout for simple, simple meals, simple theme nights, things that I won't have to spend a ton of mental energy or physical energy when it comes to cooking. Number five, new meal night. He would like to bring that back. I know I've told you guys before, we typically have a new meal night every year and I absolutely love it in most cases. But right now, knowing myself, knowing how physically and mentally tired I have been, I know that doing a new meal night would probably just lead to me not doing it, putting something else easier there that week or whatever. And I actually had to switch it up this second part of this year because it just wasn't happening. And I wanted to put something there that would be much more simple for me to do every single week. <laughs> Indie food night. So. My husband, like I said, he's from the Midwest. He's actually from North Dakota, and I'm not a huge fan of North Dakota food. So yes, that's that's quite funny. But unless you're cooking that night, Ross, I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Seven, breakfast for suppers. And I actually really like this idea because a lot of breakfasts, even the more involved breakfasts, like pancakes or hash rounds, things like that, they are more involved than I like to do for breakfast myself, but they're, on the easier side for dinners. So I actually really like that one. I think I'm going to definitely add that one. Build at night. And we were talking about this a little bit before he decided he wanted this to be a secret. And he was saying he would like to bring back the original build at meals on Friday nights like I had before and do that rotation again instead of recently I had been just doing burritos on Friday nights just because it's easy and it was easy for me to make even in the evenings when the little guy is fussier and something that I could just throw together pretty easily without too much thought or preparation. But I might bring that one back. I, I do really like that meal night and it's, it's a rotation that I already have, so it wouldn't be too hard to plan out. A soup night, okay, that's always fun and pretty simple. I do like that one as well. Potato night, that could be fun. I would need to come up with a rotation for that because I don't currently have one, but I do like that idea. Potatoes I love because they're filling and they're cheap and you can do so much with them. So I kind of like that one. I might have to think about the rotation for that one though. Taco night and 12, a random quote, screw it, we're going out to eat night. <laughs> so I love the idea of that. I would love to go out to eat once a week. That would be absolutely fantastic. But I don't think he actually wants me to put that once a week because I don't know about you guys, but the price for our family to go out to eat has probably at least doubled in the last couple of years. It used to be we could easily go out to eat, we could have our girls share a plate, 
Now at seven and a half and four and a half, they will polish off an entire plate all of their own. So it has definitely, in addition to the inflation costs and all of that stuff, the price of going out to eat is so much more than it used to be for us. And I definitely don't think that fits into our budget to do it every week. And Ross, if in the future, if you're watching this, you can let me know if you would like me to put that on once a week because I would be happy to go out to eat once a week. You will get no complaints from me. So we'll do breakfast for supper. We'll do a build at night. I like the idea of the potato night. I may just have to think about that for a minute as we do this. The grilling night, that could be in the summers, summer, spring, spring, summer, fall. And then the soup night can be winter. So those two I will do as seasonal and I will rotate those for the same night of the week. Taco night is nice, it's easy. Um, I almost, I might almost do tacos instead of haystacks for after church meals because we've done haystacks for several years now and it might just be nice to have something different. So I will do the taco night for that. Casserole night and comfort food night. I can do, I don't know exactly what he means by, oh, I bet I do know what he means by comfort food. I bet he wants pot pie. So pot pie, probably special K love. I make a chili bean and cornbread casserole that could work there. He loves lasagna, but he mostly loved lasagna before we were mostly plant-based. I have made a couple plant-based lasagnas, but they just aren't quite the same. If any of you have a good plant-based lasagna recipe, please let me know in the comments down below because Especially if it's easy, it's just hard to find a really good plant-based lasagna. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll do a casserole slash comfort food night. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then leftover night. So that should do it. Now, the other thing I need to take into account is I typically have a leftover night every year, but recently it has been a little challenging to do that because our kids are eating a lot of food. The seven and a half and four and a half year old, they eat almost as much as I do, sometimes more. And we just, we eat a lot of food. My husband and I are already big eaters. So we haven't had a ton of leftovers and I really like using leftovers as lunches. So I just need to make sure that I am making plenty of food to do the leftover night again. I think I will have leftovers on there this year and I'll see how it goes, see if I can make it work. And if it doesn't work, then I can always add in another theme night later. And next year I will leave that off if it doesn't seem to be working well this year. So now I'm going to take this sheet out of the workbook, the choose your theme nights worksheet. And actually what he could have done if he had wanted to was write down the ideas on here on these lines, but he didn't, he put them on a different piece of paper. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down four different options for how I may want to organize the theme nights that I have. And then I will choose my favorite of the four options. So I didn't end up fully filling out each of the options, but it did help me narrow down which theme nights I wanted for which night of the week. So here's the thing. I fully plan on getting all of the meal plan done yesterday as I normally do, planning out the entire year in one day, but I have a sick baby who kept waking up and needing my attention and my batteries didn't want to hold a charge yesterday. So here we are, day two, same hair, same mug, different outfit, which I'm gonna count as a win for today if nothing else happens. But hopefully my little guy sleeps a little better today and I'm starting a little earlier in the day as you can probably tell from the better lighting. And worst case scenario, I will finish this up after everyone goes to bed and hopefully he will sleep a little better tonight and I will be able to get some stuff done. But. Who knows, maybe it will take three days to get this year's meal plan done. Sometimes life happens and we just have to go with it. So I'm just going to pick up where I left off yesterday and I was getting ready to start the Organize Your Dinner Rotations page in the workbook. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the theme night, the theme nights that I 
decided on last time, which I guess for you guys is just a minute ago, but I'm going to take option four, which is the option that I chose for my theme night rotation this year of the options that my husband gave me for this year's theme nights. And I'm going to just write down the theme nights across the top here on this first line with Sunday being breakfast for supper, Monday being soup in the winter, grilling in the summer, and Tuesday being casserole, Wednesday being leftovers, Thursday being potato night, Friday being build it meals, and Saturday being tacos. So then underneath each theme night, I'm just going to write all the meals that will go in that rotation. So for example, for Sunday, breakfast for supper, I may put pancakes, biscuits and gravy, hash browns and eggs, tofu, and so on for every breakfast for supper that I want to include in my rotation. And doing this before I get the calendar out will just save me a lot of time when I'm actually putting everything into the calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and get the rotations all figured out. I have my cookbooks here, my favorite Revive cookbooks that I've showed you guys before. And that's going to help me a lot for the soup rotation because he has a lot of really great soups and I'm just going to go through those and put those in the soup rotation as well. And it also, I think he has a lot of good potato recipes. So I'm probably going to get some ideas for my potato rotation and maybe even the casseroles. I can hopefully find some inspiration there. And as I fill in this page, I'm also going to be referencing my set it and forget it spreadsheet that I came out with last year and I showed you guys how to use that to plan your meals. I'm still going to be using that this year. It is a great way to organize your rotations and save that information so you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time. So I don't have to sit here and think of all the different build it meals that I want to have. All I have to do is look at the spreadsheet and decide if I want to still use all of those same meals or if I want to leave any out and then copy down the rest of the rotation that I would like to keep. And you can grab that Google spreadsheet if that would be helpful for you. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and fill out my rotations. We are officially on take three of this video. I've got a new mug this time to hopefully mix things up ever so slightly. And hopefully this will be my last take of this video. Everyone is in bed for the night, so I should be home free to finish this thing up. And thankfully, this is what I think is the easiest part of the entire process, because as you just saw, during the last nap time, I was able to complete my dinner rotations. So once this is done, all that's left is to put it into my calendar. So I'll tell you what the rotations are now. Sunday is breakfast for supper. And in that rotation, we have amazing Thai curry tofu, which is one of the recipes out of the Revive book that is so good. Hash browns and eggs, and I know I have told you guys that we are plant-based here, and the only reason we can't say that we are vegan is because we eat eggs and honey. After hash browns and eggs, we have waffles, followed by biscuits and gravy, French toast, omelets, granola parfait, tofu gravy, which is a gravy sauce that we put over toast, and pancakes. So those meals, I will go through all of the Sundays as I have done in previous videos. And on the first Sunday, I will write amazing Thai curry tofu. On the next Sunday, I will write hash browns and eggs. On the next waffles and so on. And when I get to pancakes at the end, I will just start at the very beginning again and go through the list until I get to the end of the calendar. 
So Monday is our seasonal theme night. And if you would like other seasonal theme night ideas, you can check out my theme nights video and I will put a link in the description down below and in the cards if you want to check that out. But for us, it will be soups in the winter and probably late fall and early spring. And then we will grill in the late spring, summer and early fall. So when it is grilling season, it's basically only going to rotate between two different meals and that is burgers and hot dogs. And then for soups, I have quite a long rotation here because as I was going through the cookbooks, I reminded myself of a lot of soups that I enjoy. So there won't be too many repeats for the soups, which is kind of fun because that makes it so that each week is exciting and interesting as far as the meals go. So my soup rotation is Malaysian laksa. Then I have Alton Brown's lentil soup recipe, and I will link that in the description down below because it is super easy, super tasty, simple ingredients, and just about everyone I've made it for asks for the recipe. So it is generally my go-to when I'm asked to bring a soup somewhere or make a soup for any sort of occasion. Although I was very flattered to find out when my niece and nephew visited over Thanksgiving that they call it Auntie Cassie's lentil soup and they requested that I make it when they came and visited. So sorry, Elton Brown, I think I'm just gonna start calling it Auntie Cassie's lentil soup now, but I'll leave a link to your recipe down below just in case anyone else wants to check that out. After that, I have a creamy tomato soup. After that, a creamy Thai pumpkin soup. And I think that's actually one that I have not tried before, but it's from the Revive cookbooks and just about everything we've ever tasted out of those has been very good and well received by the whole family. So I have high hopes for that one. That is followed by a spiced Indian lentil soup, which is also a new one, but again, it's in the Revive cookbooks. So I feel like those are pretty safe to add into my rotations. That is followed by chili con haba, which we have tried many times before and is a family favorite followed by Tuscan brown lentil soup, and it is easily a close second to the Alton brown lentil soup. The only reason the other one is a little bit higher in my opinion is because it's just easier. There's less chopping, which is a win for me anytime I don't have to spend a lot of time chopping. Then the chunky vegetable lentil, and now that I'm looking at this rotation, that doesn't make sense to have two lentil soups in a row, so I will probably swap one of those with either the chili or with the creamy minty pea soup, which I have after the chunky veg lentil. I try to keep the rotations interesting when I am writing them out ahead of time and not put two lentil soups back to back. It's not a big deal if you decide to do that. That's just a little thing that I do when I am creating my rotations. After the creamy minty pea soup, there is a mushroom and thyme soup, which to me just tastes like Thanksgiving in a soup. It is quite delicious. And that is followed by a roasted vegetable soup. So a lot of soups, I will probably only get through this rotation, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, maybe twice, maybe. Yeah, I'll probably get through it twice. And then that's a little less than half of the year and then the rest of the year will be grilling. But that's okay because this is one of those rotations that will add a lot of variety to our meal plan. And then Tuesday night is casserole night. And thankfully the Revive cookbook did help me out here. There were several options that looked good as I went through my cookbooks. So here's the rotation for that. Week one is a lentil and veggie lasagna. And again, if you have a secret lasagna recipe, please put that in the comments down below. It can have eggs, that's okay, but something without cheese that actually tastes good and somewhat holds together. I would love a good recipe like that. That is followed by a Thai tofu curry pie. It's kind of like a shepherd's pie and I have made it before and it is quite delicious. That is followed by an Indian curried phyllo, also kind of like a pot pie situation. Very good. And I would count it as a casserole. I guess we'll see if my husband counts it or not. That is going to be followed by a Tuscan white cannelloni, followed by a chili bean and cornbread casserole. And this is one casserole that I do really love. It's one from my childhood and it's just very nostalgic for me whenever I have the chance to make it. That is followed by special K loaf, which is followed by pot pie. And I have a sneaking suspicion that pot pie was the reason that he wanted this casserole style night. At least I consider pot pie a casserole type meal. I don't know if that actually is or not, but we're gonna go with it and we're gonna put it in the casserole nights because I love pot pie and I know my entire family does as well. 
Then Wednesday night is our no cooking night, and for us that is leftovers. Thursday night is potato night, and again, my Revive cookbooks came to the rescue on this because I wasn't exactly sure what I was going to do here. Week one for potato night is gado gado, and this is something we got out of the Revive cookbooks. It is a, what I would consider to be like a potato-based haystack. It's something where you have all of the ingredients in different bowls and everyone takes from the bowls and puts it into their own bowl and mixes it up with a sauce. And in Gado Gado's case, it is a peanut sauce. It is absolutely delicious. I would be okay if we had a Gado Gado night once a week and every week we had the same thing. Maybe I'll have to do that some year. But for now, it is week one of our potato night, followed by a sweet potato hash and now I'm looking over and seeing that hash browns and eggs will be on the same week as the sweet potato hash. So I may mix that around a little bit. And the next meal in the rotation is patatas bravas. And this is another haystack style meal, if you know what haystacks are, where you have a big bowl of each ingredient separately, and then each person adds the ingredients to their dish and combines it in a sort of salad. Then we have scrummy stuffed sweet potatoes, and that is a recipe from the Revive cookbooks. And also as a side note on this, since I have a lot of different cookbooks, I guess not compared to a lot of people, I have several cookbooks. I have about six different ones that I pull from when I am doing my yearly meal plan. So next to each one, next to each recipe on here, I will put the number of cookbook that it comes out of. And then also when I'm putting it on the calendar, I will write the number with it as well. That way when I am going through and making my shopping list, I can go to the right book the first time and look at the ingredients. And after that, I have creamed corn baked potatoes, which is followed by something that Jeremy Dixon calls brambaraki, and it's a Czech pancake. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Sorry if I'm not, but it's basically like potato pancakes. So we have made that before and it is good. So I am putting that in the rotation as well. And then Friday is our build it meals and our build it meal rotation shortened quite a lot this year, right? Right here, a lot shorter than my normal rotation because some things like gado gado went on the potato night instead of the build it meal night and something like tacos went on the taco day instead of the build at meal night. So I kind of pulled from the build at meals and put them on other days of the week. Also Malaysian laksa on the soup night is another build at meal. It's one where you have the whole bowl of soup and then everybody adds in toppings. So I had counted that as a build at meal before, but now it's on the soup night. So it just means that the rotation is shorter and I will go through the rotation more often. So our rotation for the build-up meals is sushi, falafels, fajitas, donburi, which is, I believe, a Japanese bowl, where, again, you have those different bowls of all of the ingredients, and then everyone combines the ingredients on their own plate. And last is spring rolls. And then Saturday is now going to be tacos instead of haystacks. So we're actually having quite a bit of change this year, which will be fun and interesting as we go through the year. So now I need to go through and write in all of the dates. Like I told you guys, I left them all blank before because I wanted you to be able to use this over and over again. And I wanted me to be able to use it over and over again. So I don't have to completely redo this every single year. You can just print it off and then write in the appropriate dates. And then after that, I just have to go through and write in my rotations. So I think I am going to start with, I like starting with the easy ones just to get those knocked out of the way. So I think I'll start with Wednesdays, which is leftovers and Saturdays. And I may also do Friday at the same time because that's kind of a simple rotation that I can just do as I'm doing the other two. Ooh, one other thing I did want to say real quick before I write everything in is if you are going to do something like this, with the calendar and you are going to do the double-sided printing and then write it in and use it as your calendar like this, I would use a little bit thicker paper. I just used the basic paper that was in the printer when I was at FedEx. And if I hold it up individually, I can see through it a little bit. It's not bad. 
So it, it's fine, I'll use it this time, but I'm definitely going to remember that for next year. And, and really once you get past the very first one, you can, I can still see it a tiny bit at the top. So I would just use a thicker paper and maybe even a cardstock, a very lightweight cardstock or something like that. If you are planning to do something like this and want it to be spiral and you want to use it as your calendar. So I'm just going to make sure that I don't use a gel pin for it this year because I don't want it to bleed through and be visible from both sides when I'm doing the meal plan. So just something I wanted to mention in case you are wanting to do this for yourself as well. And that's it. That's how you plan out your meals for the entire year. You can see my calendar is all filled out with the dinner menu plan. And again, if you are interested in getting this same set it and forget it workbook and calendar that I used during this video, check out the link in the description below and you can plan out your breakfast, lunches, snacks, and dinners. Leave me a comment down below if you made it all the way through this video. I know it is a long one, but I think it helps to see the entire process from start to finish. And I hope this video has helped you plan out your dinners for the entire year so that you don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm Cassie with makingtimeforgiggles.com and I make videos all about simplifying mom life from meal planning to decluttering to routines and budgeting. So be sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more ways to simplify your life. I will see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.